You know, when most people think pipeline, they think the rig welder, the dually, the helper, the stick welding, all that good stuff. This technology has actually been around for decades, but I don't think a whole lot of y'all actually know about it. So here it is, RMS Welding Systems, pipeline automation. Now, when it comes to pipeline construction, there's levels to this stuff. There's a different job and responsibility for a lot of folks, not just the welder and a helper. Here at RMS, they got a lot of different equipment in order to build the pipelines that run all the gas and oil for us today. We're gonna go over prepping the pipe with the facing machine, the PFMs. We're gonna go over the internal clamp, as well as back welding these 36 and 48 inch pieces of pipe. All automation on the pipeline. Let's get into it. The PFM, the pipe facing machine, we've got our technician from RMS, Mr. Paul Dodd. Mr. Paul Dodd was actually my technician when I worked here at RMS. I was his helper, who he was a great teacher and a grumpy old man, but hey. Truth hurt. Tell us a little bit about this machine. I mean, it's it's obviously a huge piece of equipment. Y'all have different sizes for different size pipes. It cuts the K bevel, cut any kind of bevel you want. You get the expanders, you set them up. So these are the, the expanders? Rollers. Yes. Okay, and these are, what are these? Guide rollers. Those are the rollers to make sure everything stays yeah. even. Nice and even, and then you have these tools that are in here. You said that you could set those up to different positions? Yeah. Almost like a portable lathe. K-bevel is what we use for the automatic welding. Jim was nice enough to draw us a little K-bevel over here. It's got just the schmids of bevel on the back side here at 37 and a half degrees to a nice root face at zero and then a 45 degree back and then it jumps up with a slide five degree. How fast do you think it could prep a piece of pipe, just a square face? piece of pipe. Minute, minute and a half. It's all hydraulic powered. Normally you'll have these things hanging on a, a track hoe in the field. Right. And then you'll stab it in the inside of the pipe out there. Right. There'll be two of them usually working together. One okay. do one end, one to do the other. Oh, so it's double. On opposite pipe, not on the same pipe. Well, I appreciate you, Paul. You have a way with words. <laughs> it's really cool to see this thing in action again. We're going to take this pup piece off. We actually have some longer sticks that is already prepped for us. They got over there. We're going to learn a little bit more about that internal clamp. Now the next piece of equipment that we're going to cover today is the internal clamp. This is a 36 inch clamp on some 250 wall piece of pipe. We got that K bevel already on there from the PFM, but I want to get a better look at this internal clamp. So let's head inside with Paul to check out that 48 inch internal clamp. This is the old reach rod, by the way. This is probably one of my favorite pieces of equipment when I used to work here because I thought it was just pretty fascinating. You worked on this thing a lot. I held the flashlight for you on that job site for quite some time. What's this big deal on the back? I used to think that was a compressor. The clamp runs off of air. It's a hook to a tack rig, which y'all see later on. Fills up the air, which runs about 220, 230 pounds is what you want. Okay. And that operates the brakes and the drives and the expander section. This little tank is a welding gas tank and it operates just the welding heads. Back here, there's not much to it. It looks like there's a lot, but it's just valves and solenoids. So okay. pretty much it's just the drive and the brakes that you have to deal with back now, here. Now, did these wheels do something different than these wheels? Nope, they both roll. They both roll forward. <laughs> they both roll forward and backwards, right? Yeah. So these sit on the bottom to help roll and these push up against the side walls. That's not the tank that runs the whole, whole thing the whole time, right? So that's gas. Right, so the tack rig have gas, and this is a kind of, a, it'll run into this, and you can get two yeah. welds in case the gas runs out. Yeah, you get two or three welds without it. So now this is the business end of the, what do you call this, this portion of it? Well, this particular clamp's got five CW heads, five CCW heads. What's CCW and what's CW? Clockwise and counterclockwise. Starts off, it welds the CW side first. When it gets there to the bottom, you flip a switch here, and it'll weld the CCW side. Okay. We got a switch here that's called home. You flip the switch over to home, and it'll go back to get it ready to weld for the next weld. So this box controls everything? This is the welder's box. This is on 80 foot out at the end of the pipe. This is what the spacers use to line it up. This box is only accessible when they run that free travel all the way out the end of the pipe, and then this is sticking out. They yeah, haven't stabbed one This is just for lining there. up, lining up and us getting our cows and everything. <laughs> you can run everything here except for welding without this box. So explain it to me as if we just finished a weld and we're trying to make it to the next one, what'll happen? We well, just finished the weld. If it's good, he'll retreat the shoes, push auto travel, and it goes to the next joint. So it, it'll run into the next weld because it'll have, have it kind of already fed on a little bit. And when it comes to the end of the pipe, you've got a whisker here that comes down, shuts everything off, or you've got a rope that you can 
pull a switch and and you also have off. the emergency stuff. That's just if you have major problems or. And then this is all your connection to your tack rig for all yeah. your weld heads, your air, air, your gas. Right. Once you kind of break it down, something so complicated, it's actually fairly simple. I mean, everybody's uh, intimidated this because it's so big. That's it. It's pretty simple machine to operate. There's one thing we didn't go over, and that's these big things. What are those? These are aligners. This is what actually lines up the pipe, which y'all see when we go out there. Am I clear down there? Yeah, so what we're simulating here is it's coming out of the end of a joint, right? Yes. This would be auto travel running all the way out. It would come out the end of the pipe and stop. Keep your hands out of the way. And it stops right there because of the dangler. There's a whisker underneath. It leads to a solenoid. When the whisker comes out, it shuts it all off. Now we got to line up. Line it up, brakes off, reverse it in. And it jams right up to it. Yeah, nice and tight. Liners will come down. We'll pull the gas up, hit wire clear. Make sure all our wires are touching the end of the bevel. And then you clip them all. Then you clip them with the head up. Got a tip to burn up. So how often do you get burnt up tips? Depends, could be some spatter on the tip. If you do end up burning one up during welding, you'll see it though on the reach rod box, right? Yeah, you won't have any voltage come up on your reach rod box. Or you will have voltage come up on your reach rod box. All right, here we go, clear. Liner's coming down, gas up. Wire clear. Flush cut them? Flush with a tip, yeah. Once that's done, you'll bring the gas down. Now you're ready for a lineup. So this is what we call the tack rig. It's just basically a big piece of equipment that has all the welding machines, the leads, the gas, everything that supplies the internal clamp. So you can see all the leads on the back side, calling them, we're hooking it up to the front, to the reach rod, which has already been run through the pipe. And now we're gonna go to the business end to see everything line up. My man Kevin Segovis here, I used to help with him back in the day. He's worked his way up a little bit since then. What is all this? So right here we got our uh, contactor box. This is what pulls in the contactor and lets everything go hot. Otherwise, whenever we're putting the pipe together, it would short out, it would arc out. We'd have a major issue on our hands as far as the weld heads go. This right here is our power, so that way we can maintain constant power to the clamp as far as AC, DC power goes. We want to make sure that our wire feed speed and our travel speed stay the same. This ensures that. It's just constant 120 AC. These here come from our weld machines. We got number one through four to help with diagnosis. If anything goes wrong, we can see here, one through four. We know exactly what's going on down there. We know exactly what's going on over here with our machine. This is our argon gas 7525 mix. This is just air supply. It's a pneumatic plant. You got to make sure you got air, make sure it runs. It charges up between cycles. What are the buttons you're going to press and what are you going to watch? All right, so what we're, one thing we want to watch out for is make sure we got power to all four heads. So we'll check this. Now let us know. It shoots a pulse of power down there through our ground. Make sure we got ground, make sure we got contact on all four heads. So now that we're sure we got power, we're going to switch over to the clockwise weld position. That's going to turn our gas on down there. It's going to get everything prepped and ready to go. So when they give me the word, we're going to go ahead and fire up. Let's burn some wire. Why are you rubbing that rod there, KD? Keep it from ripping through the top. Okay, so you rub a little 6010 on there, that's a little magic trick. That's right. Otherwise, you'll have to go in and back weld it to slow down production. And that's it for today's episode, y'all. We just put a nice, sweet, clean bevel with a PFM machine, 36 inch pipe, 500 wall, and then we stabbed another joint on the internal clamp in order to put that internal weld. We made a 36 inch pipe 
circumference weld in about 60 seconds. Now, if that ain't cool, I don't know what else is. Stay tuned for the next episode. We're here at RMS where we get inside the shacks and we learn more about those bug welders everyone's talking about. Yeah, we're done with it. I'd like to tell you more, but I gotta take a break. Ah, uh, 10 o'clock. No, we're gonna just- I'm taking it now. You just went and ruined everything. Can't get good help around here. We got to redo it now because Jim ruined it.